last class we have talked about the potentiometer how to make use of potentiometer for linear and circular measurements okay displacement basically yeah. so circular displacement or linear displacement measurement using potentiometer we talked about the uh, problems associated with the wiper and uh, to overcome the problems associated with wiper people have developed optical potentiometer as well as mr what's it mag uh, magneto resistive uh, potentiometer so actually mr there is one more explanation magneto rheological it is actually magneto uh, resistive okay so magneto resistive uh, potentiometers and optical potentiometers they are all to avoid the problems associated with your wiper basically wiper related problems all works on the same principle ohms law is equal to ir as the resistance increases proportional to the displacement and the voltage will increase and uh, calibrate the voltage with respect to the displacement you can directly measure the displacement from the uh, display itself next coming up is the encoder the encoder is also a device used for measuring displacement of course it can be used for measuring velocity also but mostly it is used for uh, displacement it can be very well extended to measure the velocity linear velocity as well as rotary velocity of a rotating shaft but mostly it is used for linear measurements encoders are basically a digital transistors okay not analog transistors basically digital transistors and uh, uh, it is used for measuring the displacement it senses the analog signal and then it gives the digital output you will understand how analog signal is generated and uh, directly now uh, the conversion of digital uh, conversion phase there is no analog to digital conversion per se but by some other means through optical means they convert the analog signal into digital you have four types basically one is incremental encoder and absolute encoder on the other side you have linear type uh, and uh, uh, rotary type okay so some authors will have that as a major division other as a subdivision in my book i have written like this um, the linear encoder i mean the incremental encoder linear and rotary absolute encoder uh, linear and rotary so uh, some authors would have written like this linear encoder incremental and absolute rotary encoder incremental and absolute that way also the classify basically there are four types of classifiers um, incremental linear encoder the uh, incremental rotary encoder absolute linear encoder absolute rotary encoder. so there are basically four types of encoders um, first we will uh, see the incremental linear encoder uh, with a 3 bit resolution and then we extend the idea towards end of this class for the other types so we will learn one in detail other three type we will extend the idea that's the agenda of the day the total uh, what is the working principle the working principle is like this the displacement of the disc basically we will have a disc so the details we will see in a couple of minutes we will have a disc with uh, uh, opaque and transparent uh, uh, surfaces opaque means what the light will not pass through transparent means the light will pass through. such a disk we will have we will have a light source and a photo cell and that is allowed or not allowed the light source is an analog signal whereas whether it is allowed or not allowed it yes or no is a digital signal that's why it is called digital transmission okay so here the light cell is uh, detecting the light coming or not that information when light comes there is a voltage when light doesn't come there is no voltage so proportional to the opaque and transparent surfaces there is a proportional change in the voltage and the change in the voltage will not be a perfect sine wave but will be a slightly uh, you know it's not in um, good shape there is a slightly uh, distorted waveform that you will get here you set it to a schematic trigger circuit schematic trigger circuit you got to understand don't worry if you don't understand just you remember schematic trigger circuit will uh, give the output as a perfect square wave for a unshaped wave form you give a unshaped wave form it will have a threshold value the schematic trigger circuit let us say 3.5 volts anything above 3.5 volts schematic trigger circuit will give output of 5 volts 
anything less than 3.5 volt, that 3.5 volt is the threshold that we set. It can be increased or decreased. Anything less than 3.5 volt, the stupid trigger circuit will give 0 volt as the output. So, output will be a perfect sign wave, either on or off. Input may be a sinusoidal wave, a distorted sinusoidal wave, a zigzag waveform, we don't care about it. Input. Output will be a perfect square wave. Square wave means not the square shape is guaranteed, either on or off, it's a perfect digital signal that we will get. If you give a sine wave, perfect sine wave, you will get a perfect uh, square wave. Otherwise, you will get digital signal output. That is the function of the stimit trigger circuit. If you do not understand the internal working of it, of course, uh, for a first level course, for mechanical engineering students like this, that is uh, too much. So, considering the scope of the course, I am not going into the details, I am stopping it here. But just understand any uh, unshaped waveform that you give, uh, it will give a square wave as an output. That is a stimit trigger circuit. So, you get square pulses. And that square pulses, you give it to a digital counter. A digital counter will keep counting the digital pulses. Okay, uh, the, the moment it comes, uh, one pulse comes, the digital counter increments by one. So counter basically counts. And then the counter uh, uh, value is displayed in display unit. From display you will be able to uh, read the values. Okay, that's the uh, overall big picture of the. Uh, now we'll go uh, uh, step one. You have a light source. You have a detector. This is basically your photo cell. It can be LDR, it can be photodiode, it can be phototransistor, anything that gives voltage proportional to the light or anything that changes its property with respect to light, you can use them. Okay. So we are, we are using a photo cell. So that will give voltage signal proportional to the amount of intensity of light that is falling onto the surface. Here you have the disk. The disk is here actually. It is a rotary incremental encoder that we are going to discuss. Okay. If it is linear incremental encoder, this is actually a, a full circle. I have, I have shown only a quarter circle only in the diagram. Okay. This will be a disk, a full disk, full disk. Uh, but for an you know, illustration purpose, I have shown only the quarter um, circle of the disk. Okay. Only one center and so on. So, what is uh, to be uh, uh, you know, focused and understood is whatever is shown in white color uh, that is transparent uh, uh, surfaces. Whatever is shown in black color that shows the portions of opaque surfaces. Opaque surfaces will not allow the light to fall. So, what happens? The, we are interested in measuring the rotary motion. Okay, how much angle it has rotated or how much angular displacement that is has made. So once the, right now, the initial position, we will assume uh, the light source completely pulls us through the transparent surface and then the detector detects full light. Okay. So you will have something like, uh, something like, yeah, full voltage you will be having. Okay. Now we are getting it. Now, <coughs> now, uh, the disc rotates, let's say in clockwise direction rotates, then the opaque surfaces starts coming into the path of light. Opaque surfaces will start hiding the light that is going to the detector. So the intensity of light that is falling on the light detector will keep on reducing. And the moment the complete opaque surfaces come into the path of light, no light will pass to the uh, light detector. So what happens for every month? So what happens, the amount of voltage falls down to a slower extent and completely it is hidden, no, no voltage, this is zero volts, okay, this is zero, this is voltage, this is uh, maybe the displacement of theta as it rotates, okay, so at a certain angle it is zero, earlier it was giving maximum voltage, this is the maximum, whatever the photo uh, cell will give, and uh, <coughs> further the rotation continues and the uh, uh, opaque surface will start moving outward and uh, transparent surface will start coming in the path of light. Then the moment the transparent path comes, the light will be uh, allowed to pass through and you will be started getting the voltage proportion to the amount of light that is falling. So it will, after some time the voltage will keep on increasing, increasing, increasing. It will reach a state where 
when completely all the uh, light that is coming from the light source falls on the detector you will see that the uh, when the transparent portion is in the path the light source is going to the light detector and it produces maximum amount of power. So you will have maximum amount of power. Same voltage will And it will remain for some time. Once the transparent surface goes, then again it will it continues like this. In one complete circle, let us say there are uh, eight transparent uh, uh, holes plus uh, path and the eight uh, opaque path. If you get this, this is a path of trans, uh, transparent item. This is a uh, place of okay. Okay. So how many? Um, if eight plus eight is sixteen, uh, one complete revolution. Uh, how much you will have? You will have eight pulses, isn't it? Eight pulses. Okay, so you will have eight pulses uh, coming up like this. So we will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pulses. Does it be able to focus on this? Because as far as this topic is concerned, the this diagram is more important than anything else. So, this is the kind of unshaped waveform that we get from the photo detector, and we pass on this to the schematic trigger circuit, and then we get this perfect uh, square waves. When I say square waves, it is not length and breadth to scale, uh, it is a digital waveform that we get. Okay. Maybe slightly longer duration on the top, in the bottom, the duration may be a bit less, still, and calling it as a square wave. So, such a square wave we will get. Okay? And there is something called flip flop. You heard about flip flop? The working of flip flop, do you remember? You heard about it, you studied about flip flops? Yes, huh? but we are very correct. Okay. Uh, flip flops are basically the basic memory units. Uh, once uh, there are many like K type flip flop, K type flip flop, uh, things like that. Let's say if you have a flip flop like this and you view your top pulse through it, you can expect two outputs for that. Okay, that one output is called Q, other output is called Q dash. If I give one square pulse, for example, if the output that I get in Q is one. Q dash will be 0. Q dash will be 0. Suppose if I get output as 0 here, I get output as 1. This is complement of this. Q dash is complement of Q. Okay. So if I give um, 1 pulse, the state will change. 1 pulse, if I give the state will change. So it will flip. Flip the state. That's why it is called flip. There are two types of flip flop. One is raising edge flip flop, the other one is falling edge flip flop. Let us concentrate on falling edge flip flop. What is meant by falling edge flip flop? Whenever the flip flop encounters a falling edge, what is meant by falling edge? There is a high voltage, this is zero voltage. Whenever the voltage falls from high voltage to low voltage, it encounters the falling edge. It encounters the falling edge. Falling edge flip flop is a flip flop which changes its state when it encounters the falling edge. Okay. So whenever you have a lot of inputs, whenever the input is going down, the, uh, the uh, falling edge is encountered like this, then if initial state is 0, its state will be changed to 1. Here initial state is 0, it will be, uh, if it is 1, it will be changed to 0. Whatever is the initial state, that will be changed to the next system. Okay? Right. And one more point that you have to remember is, Q dash is complement of Q. Always uh, that will be 
complement indicates that if it is 1, that is 0. If it is 0, it is 1. Now, raising edge flip flop means whenever flip flop encounters a raising edge, the output will change. We are planning to use a falling edge flip flop. Falling edge flip flop. Falling edge flip flop. For what? For designing a digital counter. For designing a digital counter. So, what we do? Uh, this is the uh, output of symmetrical circuit. This I have to count. If I count this, I will be able to tell uh, what is the amount of displacement the disc has made. If disc has rotated only uh, um, only one, uh, what is the angle the uh, disc would have rotated? This is situated by 8 is? What? 45, 45. 45 degrees. Okay. So 45 degrees rotation is represented by one pulse. Okay. Sir, I Sorry. I don't understand how you calculate. 45 degree how it comes. For one complete revolution, there are eight pulses. One complete revolution of this disc. I already, for an example, I said there are eight uh, opaque and uh, eight transparent uh, things. So, for one complete revolution of the disc, I will get eight pulses. So, each pulse corresponds to 45 degree rotation. Correct? Your real uh, encoder will have much more number of pulses given. Because you know, 45 degree is a very big resolution. We want smaller resolution. Correct? Right? This is for the classroom discussion. Okay. So that now we can understand easily uh, how the things work. Uh, the real encoder will have very minute opaque and transparent surfaces. So you will have maybe 360 opaque and uh, uh, transparent surfaces so that each uh, pulse will give, represent maybe 1 degree. There are devices, each pulse will represent 0.5 degree. Okay, devices are there. That means so many uh, opaque and transparent surfaces next to next to next will be available. Okay, right. This is a preliminary discussion. We are learning how it is working. So I have taken less number of uh, opaque and transparent surfaces. Also, I have shown you big transparent surface and a big opaque surface. That's only for easy for visualizing. So you will be able to see. Okay. Now, uh, up to this, you understand? After that, symmetry is circuit in Q square pulse, you understand? Now, my job is uh, I will count how many number of pulses uh, produced because of the rotation that, that they have made. So, I, I need to build a counter. Okay. I said I am going to use falling edge to the I am going to use falling edge to Let's say this is the first pulse. Asan, uh, up. This is the uh, first pulse. And uh, first falling edge is coming here. First falling edge is coming here. So I have flip flop 1 here, flip flop 2 here, flip flop 3 here. Okay. Now, before, before any pulse comes, even here, what will be the state of uh, flip flop 1? Flip flop 1, this is f of 1. This is f of 2. This is flip flop 3. I assume initially all the flip flops are in 0 position. All the flip flops are in 0 position. Oh, I didn't tell this. Sorry, what is there? Now, I want to build a digital counter. For that, what I do? I take the, uh, the, the digital output that I get. Connected to one flip flop. Connected to one flip flop. Falling edge flip flop. There are two outputs for that. Q, Q dash. Q dash, I don't worry. Simply leave it blank. Uh, Q alone I take. Connected to second flip flop. So the input for the second flip flop is the Q output of the first flip flop. See? 
Q I have connected to the second flip flop. That Q output I have connected to the third flip flop. Okay. For a easiness, I take only three flip flops. In real time, there will be five flip flops, ten flip flops, so you will be able to come to a larger number. Now, you have only three flip flops, you can count from 0 to 7. 0, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, three flip flops, you can count up, up to 7 numbers. 7 numbers means totally 8 counts, isn't it? From 0 to 7, there are 8, eight, eight uh, places that you will be able to represent. Okay. This is 2 power 3. This is 2 power 3. 2 power n, okay, 2 power 3. This 3 is number of flip flops. If you have 4 flip flops, that many you will be able to count. If there are 5 flip flops, that many you will be able to count. So, uh, you have connected that. And of course, this is clearance print. Clearance print means uh, reset button. The moment I press the clear button, all flip flops will be reset to 0, 0, 0. The Q output will be 0 once I press the restart button. Uh, suppose I have an application, I have counted. Now I want to make another measurement. So I want to reset to 0, isn't it? That's why the clear button. This is clear and then that's connected to the part. So do you understand this diagram? Flip flop 1, flip flop 2, flip flop 3. Flip flop 1, input coming from the uh, sensor. Flip flop 2, the input is coming from Q of flip flop 1, output of uh, 1, output of uh, 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 2 output is connected to flip flop 3. And uh, everywhere I will be uh, uh, referring only the Q output. See, I have never bothered about Q dash in this particular application. There are applications people will use Q dash also. In this application, uh, Q dash they are not using. Okay. Now, initially I have reset to 0, now disk started rotating, disk uh, started uh, uh, yeah, raising edge, it is in the raising edge for some time, even now, will there be any output in the uh, flip flop 1? When flip flop 1 will change its name, right now it is 0, right now it is 0, because I have reset it to 0, isn't it? When flip flop will change its state, <laughs> only when the flip flop encounters a point. So, in the, whatever is the input, in that particular input, is there a falling edge you have to see. Otherwise, you should not change the state, remain in the same state. That is the working of flip flop. So, you now look at that. This is the input that I have for the first flip flop one. I keep on looking, oh, is there any falling edge, falling edge? No, so the world is raising edge. Raising edge, it doesn't mind. If it is a raising edge flip flop, it will change its state. But we are using falling edge flip flop. So, raising edge will not have any impact. If it is continuing in the high voltage, it doesn't matter. Here it comes, here there is a falling edge. Here there is a falling edge. The moment it encounters the falling edge, that particular flip flop will change its state. Now it is in the zero state. What will happen at this particular moment? It will change it. It will remain in the same one state till it encounters another falling edge. Another falling edge. Okay. So it has fallen, remain in the low state. There is a raising edge, no problem. Same raising edge. Here there is a falling edge. Next falling edge comes here. Till then it will be in the high state. It will be in the high state. When it encounters a falling edge, it falls down. Changes its state. I, I should not say falling down. It changes its state from 1 to 0. Raising edge, falling edge. When here it comes, till then the state will not change. When it encounters a falling edge, it changes its state. Here there is a falling edge. Here it is. You are able to appreciate this? You are able to understand? Yes? So like that it goes. This is the falling edge. Um, it goes like this. Clear? Yes? Now, when flip flop 2 will change its state, when flip flop 1 output is 
polymers. Zero raising it, zero went high. Now there is a polymer. Here there is a polymer. So up to then it will continue to be in zero. Here it will go to zero. Anybody is not able to understand this? Please raise your hand. You have to understand, right? Now it goes up to here. This is the next polymer. This is the next polymer. This is the next polymer. Is that normal? Right? Now, when flip flop 3 will change its state, falling into the When flip flop 2's output, he encounters a yeah, polymer. Where is the polymer coming? Here. So, up till then it is 0. Then it is 1. Next polymer comes here. Is there any doubt up to this? Right. Now, the summary. What is that? The moment the first pulse completely generates, right? You look at the output. See, uh, my output will be like this. F of 1, F of 2, F of 3. Please note, I am writing them in the reverse order. Not F of 1, F of 3, F of 3. F of 3, F of 3, F of 1. The reverse order I am writing, that's very important. Normally, students make mistake. This, this mistake in the exam. Look at this. What is the, at the end of first pulse, what is the state of F of 1? 1. It has reached 1. Isn't it? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Right. So, 1. Before that, it is 0, 0, 0. The moment one pulse completely uh, over, then it changes one. What is the state here? Zero. What is the state here? Zero. Zero. What is the digital equivalent of this? Zero. Zero, zero, zero means zero. Zero, zero, one, base two means? Because it is a digital number, isn't it? It is digital equivalent of one. Zero, zero, one is one. You understand that? Now, at the end of second pulse, I am looking. What what is the uh, value at the end of second pulse for f of one? Zero. Zero. What is the value at the end of uh, second pulse one. for f of two? One. What is the value here? Zero. So zero one zero is two is digital equivalent of. Similarly, at the end of third pulse, this is 1, this is 1, this is 0. So, 1, 1, here 0. I am telling you the reverse order. See, I am writing the reverse order. Base 2 is this is equivalent of 3. Similarly, here it is 0, 1, 1. So, that, right? So, 1, Zero, zero. Yeah, 1, 0, 0. Okay. Base 2 is 4. Then, then what is next? 1, 0, 1. This is 5. Then, 1, 1, 0, base 2. That is 6. 1, 1, 1, 7. Where? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here it is. What? Huh? Yeah. Here it is. Sit there. 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0, 0. Here. Here it is. This is the sound pulse. Sit there. Here is the seventh pulse. Here it is one. Here it is one. Here it is one. So we had one, one, one. Now what happens to the next pulse? Zero, zero, zero. Eighth pulse. When the eighth pulse comes, here it is zero. Here it is zero. Here also it is zero. Correct, no? So if the counter resets to zero. Again, one more pulse, you go, 
it will be 0, 0, 1 and this repeats. So a 3 bit flip flop digital counter works like this. A 3 bit flip flop based digital counter works like this. 3 bit means it can count from 0 to 7. So that 2 power 3 is 8 uh, minus 1 because you are counting from 0 so minus 1. 2, 2 raised to n minus 1 will be the uh, number up to which you can count. So you can count. If you want 4 bit counter, suppose in examination, so now I want to ask a hot question. So I am asking you to write uh, a 4 bit counter, you design uh, a digital encoder uh, for an incremental rotary digital encoder using a 4 bit counter. Will you be able to design yourself? So what is that you have to do? Here you have to flip flop 4 you have to add, here you have to lengthen the uh, signal. Repeat this story for Q4 also. Q4 output will change when there is a change in the Q3. That's all. So you have to extend the same story and then this is not there in any code. Possibly you can expect this later. Okay? Is it time now? Okay, this is for how much time is left? Three minutes. That's enough. Now my in three minutes. The rest of the uh, time, no, no? Ten. 10 minutes ago, okay. no, Magesh wanted to uh, leave early. Okay, fine, no problem. Uh, the rest of the time, my job is to extend the idea for other types of uh, encoders. Okay. Whether it is linear or rotary, if it is an incremental encoder, the story remains same. There is a counter that counts the number of pulse and displays the counted value. Okay. If it is a linear encoder, the opaque and transparent surfaces are in a strip of uh, a scale. Okay. So you will have opaque, transparent, opaque, transparent, and linear. If it is a circular encoder, it will be like a CD. It will be a disk. Opaque, transparent surfaces will be in the circular form. And that disk will be rotating. Whereas linear form will be moving linear, producing the pulse. You are able to understand the linear type and the rotary type. It's clear? Now, the problem with linear encoder is, suppose I am using this in a lathe. Okay, I want to um, machine, for example, 50 mm. I want to do turning process. I have reached the 30 mm, the power point. It's very common in Tamil Nadu, isn't it? Generally, it is the power will go, suddenly it has gone. The moment power goes, of course it will come back. But we don't know when it will come back, but it will come back. It will come back. The, the moment power comes, what will happen to these counters? It will reset to zero. Again, if it runs for 50 mm, will I get the shape that I really intended to make? So in such applications, the incremental encoder is not preferable. It is not preferable. Whether power goes, comes, I wanted to. Uh, from the starting location, I wanted to do a turning process for 50 mm, for example. So, but even if power goes and comes, I want the sensor to remember where it was when the power left. And uh, now it should resume from there and then continue. Okay? Such a encoder people were looking for. They came out with actual, they came out with another device called absolute encoder, which is a modified version of a digital uh, incremental What is the modification they have done? They said, no, no, we will not use counter for this. We will directly read. We will directly read. But instead of one light source and one photo detector, we will have multiple light source and multiple uh, photo detectors. Light source may be same, but I will have multiple uh, photo detectors. Imagine. Earlier, we had a linear uh, measurement. We had only one strip of opaque and transparent. Black is opaque, white is transparent. Focus there. You have opaque and transparent or transparent and opaque surfaces, and only first row was used for incremental inputs. Okay. Now, what we did, we did multiple tracks. This is track one, this is track two, this is track three, this is track four. This is a 4 bit absolute encoder. This is not 3 bit. Now it is 4 bit absolute encoder. Okay. Now, 
how do I interpret the results from absolute encoder? Very simple. There is no counter, no flip flop, nothing. It's very simple. How I have uh, this is the uh, okay. Let's start from here. Opac means zero, isn't it? Opac means zero. The line will not come there. So zero. So zero, 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 zero. All four bits zero. So what will be the output? Zero, 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 one. You have to read from bottom. Okay, not from top. You have to read from bottom. Zero, 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 one. There is only one uh, transparent, so I will get one. So what is the digital equivalent of that? Zero, zero, one, zero. That is digital equivalent of two. Zero, zero, one, one. Digital equivalent of three. Like that, you take anywhere. One, 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 one. This is digital equivalent of huh? 14. 15. 15 or 16? 15. Okay, 15. Yeah, 15. This is the equivalent of 15. If I write it down? So, absolute encoder will have multiple light sources and multiple photo detectors and it will be able to uh, detect the light. Suppose now my day is moving and the moving taking place from here. Now the light source and uh, the strip, light source and photo detector will be stationary. Along with my carriage that in the lane, only the strip will move. This strip will move. Okay. The opaque and transparent suppose so that will move. Now uh, actually I want to machine up to let's say three, third position. Now it has reached only this ninth position. Uh, uh, here it is 0, 1, 1, 0. 1, 1, 0 means 4 plus 2, 6. Isn't it? 6 only in the middle position that reads. Power is gone. Power is gone. Lake is stopped and they are stopped. Now power come back. What will be the reading now? Will it reset to 0? No. Will it reset to 0? No. Why? Now the strip is here. Now the strip is here. The light again will not pass through here. The light will pass through here. The light will pass through here. Light will not pass through here. So what is that you will read now? <laughs> now also it is 0, 1, 1, 0. Now also it is 6. So I know what is the position during which the power is switched off. Right? Then from there machining starts and you need to do up to let's say this position till the sensor uh, strip reaches there, you can continue the machine. So you will be able to measure the actual uh, absolute <coughs> displacement irrespective of power failure. Irrespective of power failure. There, if power failure happens, uh, then uh, you cannot uh, count because the uh, counter gets reset. So, is it clear? So this is linear absolute encoder, the same matter in a rotary form. You see, all blank, all, uh, zero. This is a one one one, one 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 zero like that. See one one one, one one one, one 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 zero, one one zero one like that. Whatever it is, you just make it in the form of a circular. It becomes circular or rotary absolute circular or rotary absolute any questions it's clear so we discussed what is meant by encoder there are four types linear incremental linear absolute rotary incremental rotary absolute incremental encoders uses counter counts the pulses and then gives there is only one light source and one photo detector for absolute encoder we have we have not used uh, counters but we have multiple light source and multiple photo diodes or photo cells whatever that's all for the day.